So moving forward, analyzing your strengths and weaknesses with your visibility, the next thing that you need to do is look at your productivity style. Because where I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs struggle is that they go like, okay, great, I'm an actor, fantastic. And okay, these are the vehicles that'll work for me, great. But nothing is officially put into motion. And I find that that's because you haven't been able to locate the style that's going to work best for you in terms of implementing a plan. Are you ready to get your brand seen worldwide? Ready to learn the exact strategies that have made millionaires? Want to know the secret softwares I use to save time, energy, and keep things running and profitable with the minimal team? It's all here on my show, The Visible Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Michelle Lewis, founder of Visibility Vixen. After hitting the top of the charts in France, the UK, Australia, Canada, and Singapore, The Visible Entrepreneur is back for season four with some of the biggest names in the business. I'm asking them to spill detailed information about what's made them so successful, specifically their traffic and income generators. That way you can take notes, study the strategy that will work best for you and see success in your own lead and revenue generation. We're all about honesty here and I'll never stop working to get you the support you need and pushing you to give back to the planet. After all, entrepreneurs are changing the world. Welcome back to The Visible Entrepreneur. Hey there, and welcome back to the Visible Entrepreneur podcast. I'm happy that you're here. I'm grateful that you're here. I know there's a lot of podcasts out there in the world, and I'm honored that you listen to mine. If we haven't connected yet on Instagram, feel free to take a screenshot of today's episode and share it with me. I would love to connect with you. You can find me at Visibility Vixen. Today is going to be a fun episode because I thought since I'm completely revamping my Visibility Lounge membership and turning it into a signature program, that as I do that, I can come here onto the show and talk to you about what I've done. And I want to start with visibility personality types and productivity plans, because I think that we online are subject to so much information about where we should be posting, how we should be posting, that we feel like we're either not doing anything because we're feeling so overwhelmed about it that all we're doing is serving our clients and students and then running away. Or we're posting, 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 posting and not seeing the results that we want because we're trying to be everywhere all at one time. So hopefully I can answer both of those questions today and help you feel a little bit more integrated, a little bit more purposeful and inspired to make your own visibility plan. I mean, we're almost in June, y'all. Can you believe it? So we are hurtling through the year, and I would hate for you to keep going feeling that frustration and confusion. The good news is you have so far this season had so many friends of mine come onto the show to show you what they're doing that's making them the most income and impact. Hopefully you felt inspired by their traffic and income generators. And I will still be bringing those guests to you for sure. But if you notice, there's a pattern where not any entrepreneur is doing the same thing. Some people have specific lead generation strategies that work really well, like Ellen was talking about her uh, online challenge and the fact that it's paid and that helps go into her courses and programs or affiliate courses. Katya uh, has her templates that are paid. Um, we have had guests come on that focus mainly on lead magnets and opt-ins. There's no one right way to do it, but there is a right way to do it for you. So let's start at the beginning. When you're assessing what you should be doing for your visibility plan, the first thing you need to assess is who you are. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Uh, you can do this through Myers-Briggs. You can do this through the Enneagram test. I kind of like to do Myers-Briggs because I think that's been the most accurate assessment of my personality. I do recommend taking that quiz twice, but what you need to look at is the common denominator of your personal personality traits. So let me break things down into four different categories like I do inside of the Visibility Lounge program. So the first one is director. This is my personal personality type. You may relate to it too. This is very much a leader, but this is not a necessarily a loud leader. This is someone who is 
at the forefront, but they're not the ones necessarily in front of the camera or uh, attracting like a huge following, kind of like an actor does. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But they see what is the need in the world? How can we address that need? And what movement do we need to make going forward? Uh, they're more... Uh, in a way, publicly steely. I don't want that to sound bad, but they do tend to have a little bit of a barrier up because they really value their private life, their private time, etc. So you're not going to see them necessarily doing an Instagram story showing you every part of their life or really wanting, you know, it's not as much of that friend connection. It's more of that leader connection. It's just how we are, right? And I have a lot of people that are directors that are like, but I really want to be an actor or a writer. I'm like, I know, but if that that's who you are. That's who you are. Like you can't fight it, right? Directors are really good at leading movements. They're really, really good at creating the ecosystem of their business, of their team, and then bringing on people to fill in the gaps and fill in the roles to help them stay in their zone, which is usually creation whether it be content creation or course or program creation or writing the book. So if, for example, if you talk to a writer, a writer will say, yeah, I want to write out the book, but I don't want to work with the editing or the formatting or the book cover or the publishing or the promotion, right? I just want to focus on the writing part. You talk to a director and they have no problem doing the writing. They're not really going to have a second thought about it. They may outsource a little bit of the editing and formatting, but they at least want to know how to do the process themselves. And they're definitely coming up with a launch plan to make sure that it's successful. So directors are very interesting, very uh, forward moving, forward thinking, leading what they can struggle with is sometimes they forget to be human. Sometimes they forget to eat those kinds of things. If you're more of an actor, so you're much more outgoing by nature, you're very charismatic, you naturally attract a following, and you are more navigated by your passions. So you don't have as much of a structured routine, you don't need as much alone time, you crave interaction, you crave interviews, you crave being able to go out and see your friends, you're much more of a social being. You also can be an emotional being, but you don't like to wallow in any negative emotions for too long. So let's say you get some bad news. You may not have to go and watch Netflix and, you know, sit in your bed for an hour like a director before coming up with a plan to then get out of it. If you're an actor, you probably are going to go, this really stinks. I need to surround myself with my people and I need to go out and distract myself, right? Just a little bit different. So in your business, you're more of the creative force in terms of being in front of the camera. You don't have a problem posting on social media once or twice a day. That kind of stuff gives you energy. You don't mind showing up to calls or doing interviews. That gives you energy. What you hate is the technical and you hate like the website building. If I were to tell you like, let's build a funnel, you'd say you build a funnel. I'll pay you to put it into my business, right? So you really like being the front and being able to come into the like delivery of your your business and deliver, but you need people and team members to kind of manage you, keep you organized, remind you to send out your 1099s, etc. right? Okay. A writer is much more heart-centered. So they are going to be more, uh, please don't take offense to this, but you're just going to be more sensitive. You're going to be more emotionally driven. You're going to get more fatigued by putting work into your business than a director, an actor, or a production designer, right? You're going to feel more like, Okay, if I have to do the technical, which you hate doing, but if you had to do it, you can do like a solid hour or two, and then you need the rest of the day to take a break. But what you're more passionate about is the people that you help. You usually have a very big mission of wanting to help, let's say it's postpartum women, or let's say that it's, you know, uh, men dealing with extra weight or whatever it is. You just have a very like, you want to help people. That's your main driver. The good news about that is that people will feel that and they will be drawn to your business, especially when you speak or when you write. It's going to very much touch them. 
The bad thing about that is I know that you don't like the technical. You also don't like necessarily being the face of your business. And so for writers, it can be really hard for them to figure out a plan because they're like, well, I don't know what to do because I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I just want to be in my zone, right? And we will definitely talk about that a little bit later. So your strengths are going to definitely be the delivery side of your business in terms of having really heart-centered content uh, publicly as well as being with your clients. You usually are going to have more of the one-on-one or the masterminds where you have that atmosphere of being able to actually see the people you're working with more so than like templates, right? Um, and I think the struggle is definitely the technical, like building a website or linking your payment processor, all those things can usually be the most stressful for writers. Last but not least, production designers, you are my technically minded, amazing people. You are the ones that usually see a director, an actor, or a writer's vision and help bring it to life. And I'm not saying that 100% of you are all working for someone else. You may be your own, but I can guarantee that in your business, you are teaching and you are usually building a process or a template and then selling that knowledge or that package to a customer. So you are really great at coming up with processes systems and understanding like even if you have the big idea yourself exactly how to get it done right so these people really love breaking things down in a project management software and they check it every day you will not see any other personality type checking it day to day and making sure everything's checked off right a director wants the whole process outlined but then doesn't want to have to look at it an actor pretty much forget it. You can have someone on the team that runs that, but they probably are not going to check it at all. A writer may check in once or twice a week, but they also want some fluidity to their day, depending on how they feel. A production designer is like, hey, I, every day I start work at 9 a.m. I go through the tasks. I'm done at 11 and then I have lunch and then I go and do yoga and then I go and do this, right? They're very structured, which is so wonderful. You can get so much done. The thing that can sometimes be frustrating is you don't like being in front of the camera. You also have a hard time going like, okay, I'm going to commit to this, this, and this to grow my exposure this year, right? So visibility can sometimes be a struggle for a production designer because they don't see a way that they can do it without really extending their energy. So the things that write, that light writers and actors up usually (laughs) tend to drain production designers and sometimes directors. So a production designer, if you said, okay, let's go to a networking event, they'd be like, no, like, I don't want to do that. You might be able to say like, let's go to dinner and, you know, let's go for a drink. But if you're saying like, let's go to a party, probably not, right? So what's really interesting about all four personality types is they are so different, right? And you might be saying, well, Michelle, I took the Myers-Briggs test, but I'm an INFJ, I'm an ENTP, whatever you may be. But usually from what I just went through, you're going to relate to one or two of the types and go, no, at the end of the day, I'm more visionary. At the end of the day, I'm more charismatic. At the end of the day, I'm really more heart-centered. Or at the end of the day, I'm really detail-driven, right? So with all of this in mind... Let's take a big breath. And if you're wondering, Michelle, I still don't know what my type is. You can absolutely go to visibilityvixen.com forward slash take the quiz that will tell you which type that you are. It will also give you a custom visibility plan, which is exciting. So moving forward, analyzing your strengths and weaknesses with your visibility. The next thing that you need to do is look at your productivity style. Because where I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs struggle is that they go like, okay, great, I'm an actor, fantastic. And okay, these are the vehicles that'll work for me, great. But nothing is officially put into motion. And I find that that's because you haven't been able to locate the style that's going to work best for you in terms of implementing a plan. So I want you to take some time and figure out what are the times that you are most productive during the month? And during the week, really important, we're all different. Like, for example, I cannot schedule any of my VIP calls the first week of the month. Doesn't work for me. I'm really low energy during that time. So I don't schedule them during that week, right? So just start taking note for the next month and figuring out when are your energy cycles during the month? 
during the week, and then specifically during the day. This is going to help you really figure out the times that you should be creating content, the times you should be working on the back end of your business, the times you should be learning, the times you should be building, etc. And I find that that is insanely crucial to see any, you know, major change in your visibility and to move it forward. So once you figure that out, you understand, here's my visibility personality, here's my productivity style, what do you do? Well, the first thing I like to do is figure out what is a vehicle that's going to work for me. I like to call this a visibility vehicle. This can be a podcast, a video channel, a live streaming show, a blog, um, a virtual summit. It can be so many things, right? So I want you to decide which one is going to be most in alignment with your personality type. A director enjoys the process of just having to go on and go live, but usually they're much more skilled at doing something more pre-planned, which can be a video series uh, like a YouTube channel, which can be a podcast, can also be a virtual summit. An actor, on the other hand, is going to have no problem live streaming and doing like Instagram stories and, you know, doing more of a one and done, doesn't need a lot of editing, podcast recording. A writer will still do good at podcasting because they can connect to someone else, but the tediousness of getting the whole thing packaged up and distributed is going to be more challenging for a writer and an actor. Director is not really good in mind, right? Neither is a production designer. A writer is going to really enjoy being able to express themselves, and that can be more so a blog as, and not really a live stream because live can sometimes feel stressful to them, but maybe like a video channel as well. And then a production designer is all about that vlogging. They also can be really good at hosting virtual summits because they can get all of it together and execute it. So figure out which one of those vehicles is going to be best for you. The good news is once you get into that rhythmic nature of whatever visibility vehicle you're going to be putting out there, you can then stack them down the line where your YouTube show also is an audio for a podcast, which is also text for a blog, etc. But I want you to just commit to one to start. Then go into your planner or your Google calendar and get it on the calendar in those dates and times that align with your productivity style so that you can actually get it done. Set aside the time for each part of the process. And this means that once you figure out your vehicle, let's say it's a YouTube channel, you're going to be sharing it online, right? You're going to be sharing it on a social media channel, but it doesn't have to be all of them. If you see a lot of great leads coming from LinkedIn, stick with that. If you love engaging with other authors on Twitter, that is where you should be staying. If you really love and are able to connect and convert people on Instagram, have that be your jam. Or if you're really good at hopping into Facebook groups and communities and having conversations and getting engagement that way, use Facebook. If you don't like doing any of that and you just want it to be a visual platform that converts, go to Pinterest. You see what I'm saying? Make it methodical. Make it make sense for you and your personality type. I could step away from all my social media channels tomorrow, and I would still be converting with Pinterest. That works for my personality type, right? It would probably also work for a production designer. An actor or a writer is probably going to be more engaged on a social media channel like Facebook or Instagram. That's just the way that it works. But I don't want you to feel like you have to be everywhere in order to see success. The main thing that you want to do is provide education to people that are, you know, in your audience who are thinking about becoming a customer so that they can know, like, and trust you, just like I'm doing with this podcast right now, right? Before this show, you probably didn't think a lot about your visibility personality type or your productivity style. And so now you're going like, oh, well, this is something that I can implement later today and come up with a plan. And that makes you more likely to want to listen next week to see what else I have going on here, right? So this is the relationship that we want to build with our audience to then bring them into our world hopefully, as a customer or a client, right? Making sense? I hope so. All right, so we're getting a little long in this episode. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for being here. Like I said, if you're interested in learning more about your unique visibility personality type, please take the quiz over at visibilityvixen.com forward slash take the 
quiz. And I would love to connect with you on Instagram. Let me know what result you get. Screenshot it, share it on Instagram stories, tag me at Visibility Vixen. I would love to hear about it. And be sure to tune in next week because we're going to have my amazing friend, Chelsea Kenyon, talking about growing her business. It is just exploding. She's doing it all organically. And I think it's going to be just a fantastic conversation. So enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you soon. I hope you loved this episode as much as I did. Now we're all about building a tribe here at The Visible Entrepreneur, so be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and then head on over to the Facebook group. It's a great place where you can practice your video, live stream, and really enjoy the community that we have built. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next episode. Now get out there and get more visible. That's a wrap.